You're watching the PlantX Vodcast. Join us as we explore the inner workings of all things plant-based and all things PlantX, from the products and lifestyles to the people behind them. Now welcome our host, the man who combined his love of e-commerce and the plant-based lifestyle to create PlantX, Sean Dollinger. Welcome to the Plantex Vodcast. Thank you very much for taking time out of your day to come and explore and learn what Plantex is all about. Uh, obviously, uh, for our new time viewers, uh, Plantex is your one-stop shop for everything plant-based. So if you're looking for meal delivery, groceries, plant-based products for your pets, cosmetics, uh, we're your one-stop shop for everything plant-based. And uh, for people who don't really know what plant-based living is all about, we have blogs, articles, recipes that we share, our social media channels at uh, Go Plant X and um, X Market. The X Market one's one of my favorites, seeing all of the activities uh, and events that go out at each of our brick and mortar stores, you know, and that's what creates the community. That's what we keep seeing growing traction and what, you know, Plantex is really about at the end of the day is for people to come explore and enjoy the plant-based lifestyle. And today's guest is uh, going to be Shane. And, um, you know, the way I I met Shane a little while back, I, he actually had me on his podcast and uh, we connected. We had a, a great 30 minute conversation. And one thing led to the next where he came out to our Squamish location. It was his first time seeing it. He loved it. Uh, hopefully he'll share a little bit about that. But one thing leads to another in this community. And everybody, and I've said this on our podcasts before, where uh, everybody just wants to help one another. And then he goes ahead and introduces us to his friend Jody. And then that leads to... Uh, a, a great opportunity that was just literally signed 24 hours ago by Plantex. And that wouldn't have happened if uh, Shane had never had me on his show. So can't wait to for you guys to meet him. His energy is great. And on that note, Shane, welcome to the show. Awesome. Well, thank you for having me, buddy. Good to see you again. And hello to everybody watching out there right now. Yeah, no, thanks. Uh, thanks for taking the time. I know we were, uh, you know, going through some schedule changes today. Sorry for keeping you waiting a few minutes, but, uh, you know, really, really appreciate it. Love what you're doing. Uh, before we jump into uh, what you're, you're tackling right now, how do you take your coffee? How do I take my coffee? Uh, black, but a very, very drink coffee. <laughs> awesome and then um yeah why don't you share with our viewers what uh actions of compassion is all about yeah actions of compassion i started first as a movement and uh, we were going on north america passionate acts uh, we were vlogging uh helping people uh addicted to drugs uh, homeless raising money with nonprofits, uh just all kinds of things spreading compassion and then from there, uh, I turned Actions of Compassion into a brand because it was one of the last uh, uh, businesses I wanted to build or, let's say, uh, put many different businesses under the umbrella of Actions of Compassion. And uh, with the word compassion in the company and actions, uh, it was the type of business I wanted to build, uh, a human business uh, uh, filled with compassion that treats everybody good, that does good for the planet, uh, and makes the world better, you know, and, and, and me too, going I'm a vegan, I've been vegan just about 20 years. Now, so actually, the fashion title in our company uh, uh, was just, it, it was a no brainer uh, for us. And then the whole thing with uh, Compassion Kingdom, I know you believe in events, etc. We've spoken about it and the couple opportunities I've had a chance to meet you I think it's absolutely incredible what you're doing. Um, could you share a little bit with the audience about that? Yeah, of course. Uh, compassion stemmed from our uh, doing our, our vlog traveling around North America. Uh, compassion came and brings people together uh, where we go, uh, raise coats uh, for the homeless. I think we did about five, six hundred uh, a couple months ago, uh, whether we make sandwiches or or raise money. Uh, like right now, we 
and created a world peace shirt we're raising money for uh, uh, the kill happen with the indigenous uh, people on the reserve uh, so it's really about bringing community uh, together and um, compassion kingdom is is really about creating world change uh, but it's also about community uh, and community is extremely important and of course community is extremely important when you're building a business probably is the most important thing so it's about connecting people together so it's not just about me leading the community but it's about having people come into the community and build relationships and become friends and help each other and that's probably the most important part of compassion kingdom uh, and then we have lots of different groups in the world that uh, do uh, the same type of things that we do when we uh, go out and do it on certain days so it's really kind of taken a uh, storm uh, international now uh, and I always say, hey, when you're doing good, uh, great things happen. Yeah, for sure. And then um, one of the biggest things out there, obviously, it's great to create all of this, but then to get eyes on the story, get people to know about what you're doing is obviously one of the biggest challenges. I always speak to people, you can have the greatest thing and drive traffic. On the flip side, you could drive traffic. And if you don't have something great, then what's the point? It's got to be a combo of both. Uh, can you uh, speak a little bit on what you use to attract new um, guests, viewers, et cetera, into your environment. And uh, yeah, let's start there. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, yeah, and you're 100% right on that. That's the hard part. It's easy to create something, but to uh, get people to get to see what you're doing is is the tough part. Uh, so we do it a variety of ways. Uh, we do, uh, obviously, uh, media. Once we got Compassion King going, we were doing stuff. Uh, it was easy for us to reach out to media, uh, CTV, and different news channels that started to give us exposure. But here's the difference is we reach out to them. Uh, we, we see what's maybe happening in culture, and then we craft the story around what's happening in culture that maps back to our business objective. And then we send it to them because they can pick up that story that's happening in culture, and it's easier for them now uh, to be able to show. Us. So it's, it's very strategic for us. Uh, to get that. Uh, we also, uh, all social media is big for us, and, and we just have a, a team, literally, two people literally reach out to people consistently uh, to number one, to bring them into the compassion community, to bring on guests on our podcast, um, and we're consistently uh, uh, doing that uh, over and over and over and over again. And of course, you know, so platforms, of course, do become big, partnering. Uh, with other people and and making sure that the content is created uh, so it's contextual uh, to certain platforms so if we're if we're looking to you know get something out on, on our instagram for example we're making sure that 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 plays to that social media platform that the content maps to that and if we're going to put out it on linkedin uh like we put out our business show on linkedin uh that that, that content Content maps to that audience as well too. So we're very strategic on how we put our content out on the channels, and then also partnering with a lot of people helps us uh, get it out there a lot more. And then we do some paid uh, advertising as well too through Facebook and the channels. Yeah, I love the play on uh, content creation. I obviously in two thousand and twenty plus uh, we we made a big shift and focus on Ken content. One thing that we didn't do, which is quite interesting, what you brought up is creating the content around a narrative that perhaps is a hot topic in, um, you know, in the news and then being able to approach them and adapt the business uh, to that angle. I, I think that's really, really smart and clever. Um, as far as uh, social media platforms, which is, which is your favorite? <laughs> I love that question because I mean, have the biggest following on you know, Twitter, like, I don't know, 120,000, 130,000. That's where it started, uh, was Twitter. Uh, but um, now video is over indexing on all the social So you have to do a heavy video play and short on every platform. So YouTube shorts. Uh, here's a good example. If you would have started TikTok, the people that started TikTok two years ago, and if they started today, that has a million, million followers, wouldn't have a million today. They might have a couple hundred thousand. Now, having said that, YouTube shorts right now are 
popping. Facebook Reels are popping right now. Anything that is short right now, but those two platforms right now are, are where actually uh, businesses and brands can actually gain the competitive advantage right now. With strong play posts now. Short content. Uh, people are wanting to watch that, that now. Which the for us is to put out a lot of content, and that's back to our large your brand strategy the more short we put out there so i think all the platforms you know you're going to have stuff that plays more to maybe your, your shorts in general will map back to everything when it comes to content i think it's changed meaning when we used to do mark we would think about just like marketing and talking about one thing like say if we're talking to we would talk business but now a lot of things like you could be talking about sports and then people see that and they might be interested in that. Or I could be talking about compassion and then that person comes in and looks at our brand or you could be talk talking about hockey cards or whatever it is. I think that if people get too, if they don't wide enough, um, I, I think that they're, they're not in the competitive advantage. The wider you go, and don't be scared to do a lot of content in different areas. I believe it's back uh, to what you're doing. Yeah, I love it. And I uh, love having guests like you on the show who uh, who give this valuable feedback for, um, you know, for our investors and shareholders and obviously business owners. I think that it's really, really important. I think everything that you're saying makes a lot of sense in having a uh, content specialist, even though obviously, um, you know, you apply it to different things. And I know you have a, a super successful track record and um, everything you're doing, I think is wonderful. Um, it's really, really great to hear. Uh, Shane, as you know, these are live shows and uh, with live shows, there's different obstacles that come in. Even today, getting stuck on Marine Drive for, you know, an extra 20 minutes puts us back. And then, uh, you know, there's uh, on the platform, some sound issues that we're going to have to work through. But for the most part, I hear you loud and clear. And, um, you know, for our investors and, and shareholders joining us today, uh, please give feedback on our show. We'll go ahead, give you a $100 gift card, write Sean, S-E-A-N at plantex.com so that we could get it out for you. And you could go ahead and, and shop and explore the Ecom platform that I'm extremely proud of. I think the team's done an absolutely brilliant job on the platform and uh, you know, can't wait for you to see it yourself and feel free even if you don't win the gift card to go shop and, and test it out and give feedback with that as well. Um, so you touched a little bit on humanizing kind of the content creation out there. How do you apply that to the plant-based industry? Uh, you know, I think humanizing is something actually you you guys are already doing. I think going back to the Squamish location, when I went out there and looked at how Squamish location was being built, I, I felt that it had a real community feel. I felt that it it, it was, you know, bringing more chips together with inside that. And that goes back to humaning a brand. I think that when you want to humanize a brand, it's people first, which then becomes community. And I believe that you know, a, a business builds really big and I'm really strong if you can get team and community right. And both of those come down to humanizing everything. And and so uh, I like what you guys have done with the Squamish stuff because I be, believe that that's so strong community there. Uh, and that's why you've had such great success with that location. And, and that to me is uh, humanizing that maps back to business objectives. So it's building relationships in the communities with people, and I think that uh, people, when they're building communities, don't a lot of times don't do it properly. Uh, you know, they look, they get somebody on it, and and they almost just look, look at it as a platform. So they're always talking to them as a leader, and you're always like kind of trying to lead them. But a community doesn't build that way. A community builds when you can bring people together, get them building the relationships together, get them talking together, get them helping each other. And basically, you should, you could just even you know even be hands off. At times, yeah, of course you're going to lead it. Community builds that way, and that's I believe how businesses build. And that would be number one of the number one things of humanizing a business. Yeah, no, love the uh, love the direction, love the feedback, and yeah, we definitely see that going on. Like you said in Squamish, which we had the opportunity to have lunch over there. And then um, 
yeah, our Venice location. To be honest with you, our Chicago location was so big and it didn't have that, that feel. And that's why we're creating this food hall now, which I, I think is all the, the rage in the world. And uh, we're going to have a, a 7,000 square foot, uh, six vendor, 300 seat, 30 seat bar. Uh, and uh, we've had about 12 partnerships now fully secured for that food hall. And uh, can't wait to share with our viewers and investors all about that. And uh, yeah, so we'll definitely be applying a lot of things that you're speaking about, Shane. Before we jump into the questions from the viewers today, um, maybe you could speak about, is your business a for-profit, non-for-profit? Yeah, it's for-profit, for two sides. One side is, is uh, uh, you know, we do training on humanizing your business and I have trainings on uh, brainwave synergy. I'm heavily trained in brainwaves, which actually, by the way, goes with compassion. So heart brain coherence is the fastest way to change the world, actually spread compassion. And it's probably the, the uh, reason why we're not changing the world at times and we're not creating world peace is because of the lack of heart brain coherence as a human being. That's a whole nother topic we could talk on for about five hours. So alone right there. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're four, four, four profit. <laughs> All right. Awesome. And uh, yeah, you know, you gave me a little bit of a lesson on that. And uh, just so you see, I was paying attention. I believe it's alpha waves and beta waves and it's what slows down time and what allows us to focus and all of that type of good stuff. So that was a, a, an awesome hike we did and had a chance to speak about all those those great and interesting things. So can't wait to continue that conversation. Um, so um, if you don't mind, uh, we just have a few questions over here and they're unfiltered. So I'm going to read them out to you and uh, and uh, you could let us know um, what you think. So uh, Michael Grennan, who's always super active on our podcasts. Thanks for joining, Michael. Are we selling alcohol in Chicago soon? So. Michael, you know, the point of these vodcasts is obviously to be super transparent. And, uh, you know, we went ahead and acquired that store, which was originally Peter Ruby. The X market sign has gone up and it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, but unfortunately, uh, you know, people were coming into the store, a vegan store, uh, if, you, if you can believe it, and actually stealing, you know, alcohol off the shelf and running out the front door you know, which obviously created new challenges. We had to restructure the way the layout worked. And these are the things that we deal with uh, as a management team, you know, as founder of the company, uh, there's all these challenges that you would never expect in a million years. And then all of a sudden they pop up and what are we gonna do? Stop selling alcohol? No, we're gonna pivot and think outside the box, get the product back on the floor because hiring a security guard at $40 an hour doesn't do our shareholders, investors, or the company any good. Uh, we're also doing this whole pivot into this food hall and then we're gonna have this gorgeous bar. So that license that we got is actually gonna produce some massive ROI here over the next uh, couple of years. So thanks for, for being active. Um, Shane, when you reach out to media, do you have to pay for them to pick up the story? No, not at all. A, a matter of fact, you have to pay. It's probably not going to be a great story. Uh, so again, when you're reaching to media to get them to bite on anything, you're trying to get a story that's relevant in culture, wrap it back to your business objective. And uh, you just need to keep sending to different media on a consistent basis. We also have a relationship management system. We have the media in, and I see what types of relationships we have with everybody at, 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 at different medias. And I'm always trying to build relationships with them too. And, uh, and that, that, that's humanizing, right? So meaning if I have a relationship with Sean for a year and we become friends and then I go and ask him for something that's a lot better something's going to happen than being like oh hey bro you know can you give me something so we come up at two different ways one there is when we see the opportunity and something's cultural we just send a bunch of media uh, and two we're always building relationships with the media and different people so that we're always uh, in the forefront when they think of they need somebody we're there we're there 
Love it. And uh, yeah, thanks for taking Michael's question. Uh, he has a, another one that I'll come to in just a moment. Um, Youth Rex, you, uh, you know, thank you very much. He says, nice cap, Sean. I don't normally wear caps, Shane, on, but, you know, obviously I know you, so felt comfortable I could come on the vodcast with it. And he says, make it a, a regular <laughs> for the vodcast. So thank you uh, for making my life easier, Youth Rex. I'll use that in the future. Um, and then, uh, he goes on to throw a compliment your way, Shane. Um, hard for me to link the words compassionate and business together. I'm amazed with this guest. So, um, you know, thank you very much, Threx, for, uh, for putting those comments in there. We love that. Uh, Michael, again, comes with a question. Um, can we get examples of humanizing business? And I'm going to combine his next one. If Shane owned Loblaws, how would he humanize a company like Loblaws? Five hour question. I think that if you're if you're a leader and and you're and you even have a bit of a bigger company, first off, I see people only have even 40 employees, 50 employees, and they don't even take the time for people, which is, is easy to do. And so I th think that as a, a leader, you're owning something maybe even a little larger. I would spend 50% of my time uh, in the trenches uh, with the people, stocking the shelves with the people. Um, you know, cleaning the floors with the janitors. Uh, I would be down there with the people. I would know them. I would know. I would sit down. See what did? What do they want? What is their? What is their dream? One of the things too I'm trying to do is when I'm down with an employee, I'm trying to figure out what is their purpose. What is their? What is their dreams? What do they want to get to? Do I have a chance to help them get there? And then how can I map that purpose? back to their purpose. And if I can do that, that, I can build a really strong human because in the end, that's really caring about people. You really want to know about us. And, and I believe that if way more CEOs started to build businesses that not only they would have a lot more happiness and, and, and people would just, you know, have better experiences, but their companies would grow faster. And I truly believe that it is 100% the competitive advantage in the marketplace now. Yeah, I would say uh, connecting and having um, like-minded employees and team members is so important in 2022 because if everything's just driven by wage, you know, and you could go sit in an office and make a few dollars more, how does that compare to actually putting your energy and effort into something that you truly believe in? And at Plantex, you know, we have a beautiful day here in Vancouver and if a team member uh, you know, has a plan to get their job done today and they want to go out for a, beauty, a beautiful hike for 45 minutes an hour, we definitely encourage it. And it's part of the whole lifestyle and connecting with our, our employees. And then um, these events that we put on, you know, it would be like if we set up events for unhealthy living, how would that make any sense, right? So uh, we bring in the health aspect, the fitness aspect and tie it all together to create exactly what you're saying. But, you know, there's definitely room for improvement. Loved having you on the podcast today. I could take the last question, so I don't wanna take up more of your time. Uh, and, and thanks again, Shane. Look forward to getting together in person soon. And thank you so much for the support. Thanks for the introduction to Jody. She, uh, she's one, a wonderful person. Um, two, their company, you know, we've had our brother on the podcast. And uh, we, we truly believe in their products. I, I love their direction. And three, she just made an unbelievable introduction to for Plantex that is definitely going to help uh, Plantex get to the next level. Um, and, uh, you know, that wouldn't have been possible if it wasn't connecting with you originally. So thanks again for everything you do. And thanks for being you. And uh, again, can't wait to hang out with you soon. Awesome. Thank you so much, Ro, for the kind words and having me on here. Take care. Everybody. Take care. Uh, Michael asked a, a great question about our coffee company in Toronto uh, doing something with Ukraine 100%. Uh, again, we'll reach out to the uh, portfolio coffee team on that side of things. Their business keeps growing and growing and growing. And uh, just so proud of, uh, of the team. Um, they, they, 
you know, the footprint that we're expanding to in Toronto. And I've been ordering their coffee and I'll tell you, it is awesome. I challenge any viewer to go ahead, order off of portfoliocoffee.ca. And if you do not like it for any reason, uh, email me the receipt, Sean, S-E-A-N at plantex.com. And I will, not the company, I will uh, personally go ahead and refund you for that purchase. Um, I've been living here for uh, four and a half years in this home. And um, before I started ordering portfolio coffee, I tried everything and it tasted like water in the machine. It just didn't taste good at all. And uh, about three months now, portfolio coffee, I, I just find myself going back and forth to the machine while, uh, while working because it's that good. It truly is. So great job to portfolio team. Keep up the amazing work. And please, whoever goes ahead and orders it, you know, come on the vodcast next week and speak about it. That way these become more interactive and community, community oriented, which I think is going to be really important to get this to the next level. You know, let, let's maybe take what Shane spoke about today and really target it towards these vodcasts. Uh, again, thank you very much for taking the time out of your day to join us. And uh, Michael, we'll go ahead and give you the $100 gift card this week. So send that email, sean at plantex.com. We'll get that over to you. Maybe you could order some portfolio coffee. And, and again, thanks for believing, supporting us. Until next week, stay curious, stay planted, stay healthy. Thanks for watching the Plantex Vodcast. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. For more information, go to investor.plantex.com. See you next time. Plantex believes in a plant-based future for our health and the health of our planet. We've created a unique online shop for everything plant-based. Our intent on positioning globally is the core of our vision for investor accessibility and corporate growth. 